I changed out the device, so I'll wait for everybody to come on. I got to get used to that the camera is this way. I'm going to adjust it too because this one gets a lot clearer than what it is. Hi, Vicki. Give me a second to get the situated because it's totally, totally messed up. Hi, Anna. And right there. I'm on a different camera on a different device, hoping that because this is running with a direct cable to the Internet. So I'm seeing how much better this one <laughs> works. It's a lot clearer, I could tell you that. <laughs> so, OK, let's see how long this one lasts. If not, then I'll switch back to the tablet. But now I got to remember that the screen is that I'm. When I look at you guys, I got to look that way. And yeah. Sound is better. Yeah, because this one has a separate microphone. Um, it runs off a of tube, but this one has like a sound deadening microphone. So we'll make it work. I'll just wait for everybody to come back, though. I can't tell how many people are watching. How do I see that? Oh, three. Okay. I didn't put any information or anything on this one. Hi, Doris. So this one's kind of a blank video. I'll change all that later, but I had to come back on, obviously. So I'm pressing this one to the left. Well, good. I'm glad it's a clear picture. Or I can see it this way. I'm glad it's a clear picture. <laughs> it's, it's I have to adjust the like um, I, I don't know what it's called like the the blurriness or unblurriness. The only thing is is this one only sees a certain section. So every time I do something, right now all you guys can do is see me in the sewing part. But that's okay. You, you pretty much know what I'm doing if you were watching my last live. <laughs> All right, so one more on this one, which I'm on this piece right here on this one. So let's just put this two in a, inches or so down and get it sewn on. And that gives me two more after this to make. Someday they will have better internet service for my area, though. I can tell you that. Or at least an option for people who make videos like me. All right, so this one gets pressed to the left. So I'm going to fold it back and finger press it. I'm going to number it because this is now number four. Pin it to the project. And lay it down on the floor, which is totally out of the screen. So you guys can't see any of that anymore if, once I'm on this screen. All right, so now I'm on this row right here. So second to last row. Which would be this one. Okay, 
so. It starts with this piece and ends with this piece. So let's make sure they're in order. So it goes the flowers, turtle, seashell, leaves, solid, and flowers. Okay. All right. And this one, I'm going to press everything to the right because the last one was to the left. I'm going to lay this about two inches down and just get going again. Strips are cut exactly the same. They should all just fold nicely. All the way down. So now I'm going to go to the right with these. Yes, I'm a different angle. I'm on a different camera. Oh, I swapped because the computer is yeah because the computer is directly plugged in to the internet line. Yeah, so it should have a better signal, and it's they said clear picture and sound is good. So this That's one good. also has the separate mic. That's good. But not everybody came back yet. Oh well, it's okay. So again, I'm on the next one. They're saying hi to you. Oh, hi everyone. It would be hard for him to come into the screen because he would block the camera unless he came all the way to where I am. <laughs> well, it's okay. Our girls are still be here. I'm just waiting on them. They make my day. I need to find a way for this machine to stop bouncing around on this table, by the way. I know you picked up any times. I don't know. Put foam it's under got, it? It's got an anti stick there underneath, and it's still vibrating itself off the table. I don't know. Would you want to make a tray to put it in? Well, that's what I got that wood for, was to sink it down in. I'd sink it down and make a train. Just sit the thing in a train. Instead of cutting up another table. All right, let's see. Hi, Faith. Welcome from Indiana. Yeah. Susan's just, just sitting, sitting here, here working and got this notification. Well, I was on a little bit ago. I was on on a different video, and then my uh, tablet wasn't getting the internet so i had to switch now i'm on the computer and i keep forgetting to look at that's the screen instead of this way i'm not used to it anymore because i like to look at the camera when i talk to you guys no not right now i'm actually kind of warm <laughs> it's spring break here next week it's already warm we went from one cold weekend to all of a sudden summer it's in the 80s soon to be 90s out there but I still wear them at night. Just haven't much during the day. Yeah, our nights still get down into the 50s. But our days are warming up. We're getting into the 80s here. So they're 77 today. Yep, a little too good there. Your weather's nice too. Sorry, sometimes I have to answer my phone. Hi, Pamela. Scott already walked out of the room, but I'll tell him you said hi.
Same here. Only two or three months. That's it. Then it goes away. And the rest of the time, it's like summer. <laughs> well, for most of everybody in the United States, their summers don't get hotter than 80. So technically, we're always like dead summer. <laughs> All right, next piece. Got to make sure by looking at my chart, it is this one. My chart is my actual sewn piece, by the way. All right, Teresa, I see your rack. <laughs> Summer lasts too long, Diane. Yeah, I don't know. Not for me, because I actually like heat. Makes me feel good. It's not humid here. Here it's uh, super duper um, dry. Super dry. I'm just finger pressing my pieces. Yeah. Oh, well, it's nice, though. For me, it is. I like it when it's super hot. Yeah, Vicki, you have way too much snow. I just read a thing that's an article that said something about you guys already got like 300 um, inches of snow this year, which was a, a actual record breaker. That's crazy. <laughs> And supposed to get more. Yeah, see, that's too much. Snow. The only snow we got was round on the mountains and just on the top, and it didn't last very long. Everywhere around us got a lot of snow, though. Just not here. Okay, I'm on my last row, what I'm considering a row, for my strip set, which is one more to get done. And that one will get finger pressed to the left, because this one goes to the right. Okay. Strip set number five done. All right, one more to go. Make sure it's in order. And for those that are new, I am making this right here. So I'm on my last row of that. So it starts with this. Oops. I'm upside down. It was this one, then this one, then the turtle, then the shell, and the leaf, and then that. Okay. All right. And then I'm just offsetting them by 
two inches or so. And I'm counting, I'm not counting the selvage and those little dots that are the holes that are in the selvage. I'm actually counting beyond that as two inches, by the way, just for those of you who's never done strip piecing and had to um, stagger them. some kind of howling it's because the baby is out front and her newest thing is howling with scott oops it's kind of cute all right so this one is now being pressed to the left and then i get to press all of these Hi, Lisa. Yeah, I'm not on a, this is not my normal live day, but I have work to get done. So I figured I would teach the process of making this. So that is why I was hoping I would have good internet throughout this process. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to do my lives for this from this camera, even though it's kind of hard to move it around because it is a um, smaller camera. But we're going to make it work. As long as I have to, uh, I can just adjust it every time I go to make cuts and stuff. It's just weird because I have to remember to look at the camera this way and then the screen is actually this way. So when you guys see me looking this way, it's because I'm looking at the screen instead of you guys. And, oh, my brain. Because I can't see comments if I look that way. All right. Who, me? I'm not feeling good at all. I just, I, I sew when I don't feel good as often as I can and or I stay in bed, but I couldn't stay in bed, in bed any longer because I just feel like so much like poop. <laughs> My, I'm having severe belly, belly, severe belly ache issues and it's, it hasn't gone away in days. So, but I am sewing in hopes that it just, keeps me from thinking about it. And then talking with you guys is keeping me from thinking about it. I'm making it work, but I got to get this done. So, or at least mostly done because this one is a lot of work, a whole heck of a lot of work. Plus, I, I really, really wanted to record this process, but since I can't edit videos, you know, since I get that stupid banner, until I can edit videos, I have decided only to make as many as I can that can't don't need to be edited, but it would be hard to have to edit all these videos together if I made them separately, especially if I mess up, well, like my first part, I messed up. So. I just decided, you know what, I can just do it all live. 
and I like the interaction of live anyway better than I do of making a regular video. So it makes it easier for me to just record the process this way. So if anybody wants to follow along, they can go back to the original videos and, and find it, you know. Oh, that sucks, Susan. Yep, I'm having those kind of issues too. <sighs> okay, next piece after that is this. I'm just trying to keep my pieces in order. I'm still staggering them, as you can see right here. Still staggering each piece down. It helps being able to cut on the 45 degree angle. <laughs> and less fabric waste and more pieces for the cut. So it's the same process as if you were to make a Lone Star, except with a Lone Star, you only need eight pieces. This size one right here that we're making, if you make um, eight of these, then you can make a small baby quilt Lone Star just with eight of those. So all you need is the six strips itself because you will get eight pieces from that. And I can show you guys that as well, but once these are all made, how that works. Obviously I won't sew them together, but I could lay them out and show you when I get enough pieces sewn together. top of that for sure. I'm uh, originally from Chicago, so if I never see snow again, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't like snow. I'm not a snow person. I'm trying to burp under my breath so you guys don't hear it. I have really, 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 really bad burping with acid just, just sitting in my throat, so... Or an endoscopy on Thursday. I'll have fun with that. I've had colonoscopies, endoscopies, and all of it, which is leading to all sorts of other stuff that they want to do further testing. Whole nother day, a whole nother story. I'm working on this. I kind of like put a finger on the bottom, one middle on the bottom, first finger on top, and the thumb on the top of that, and I kind of just adjust as I go to be able to go through all the strips faster until I get to the end, then I hold it on top of itself. I don't know if you guys have noticed that I do that throughout this process. So again, this one goes to the left. And this is my piece number six. You can't make me catch donuts. Oh, <laughs> the game that we play, Diane. And this is piece number six. I don't want to get these out of order at all because I don't have to always refer to my chart, even though I do refer to the chart constantly throughout the process. All right, so now I'm going to put this over here and somehow figure out how to press so that you guys can watch the rest of all this. I don't know how I'm going to do that, though, because this camera is like a close angle camera. I don't know how to make it far. But we're going to see right now. Okay, ready? It's going to wiggle for a second. Let's see. There's a baby bed. Oh, there's an ironing board. You see how burnt my ironing board is? Look at how close up that gets. Wow. 
So I'm going to put the pieces on the ironing board so that you can see how they're pressed really nice and tight. I'm hoping this close-up angle might help some of you see how the seams are. So don't mind. Like I said, I think I used the wrong kind of material when I made my ironing board cover out of a sheet. <laughs> because it definitely is burnt. <laughs> it kind of sucks. But I'm going to get a new one. I need some kind of like heat-resistant fabric for the ironing board or I'm just going to buy a new cover because they're pretty cheap at Walmart all right so I'm going to grab piece number six because it's the last one that I did and I'm actually going to put since I finger pressed it see how they're all really nice so see, they're already pressed. Since I finger pressed it, all I have to do is flip it over to the correct side, flatten it out, and make sure that it's nice and straight. I don't see how well you can see. Let me move it. So I'm going to use the ironing board to keep it, you know, looking nice and straight like so. I'm just going to use my fingers to push out the seam. And I'm going to start right here in the middle, and I'm just going to use a dry iron. Since all my seams go to the left, I'm just going to roll it across nice and flat. Just like that. Just nice and soft, nice and quick. So I'm just going to go across it. I'm going to keep it from folding or stretching or anything. So just align it on there. Got to go around my little number right here. Coming to the end. Just follow all these seams, keeping them nice and flat. This beginning part right here, I don't really care about. See, if it's folding wrong, it don't matter as long as it's flat. And then I'll move it to the other side and finish that end. Trying to keep it flat on the ironing board. So now you at least can see what the fabrics I'm using are. No, nope, not from a jelly roll. These are from yardage that I cut myself. Now I'm going to add some steam. Keeping the whole thing nice and flat because these are going to be subcut on the 45 degree angle. I had to actually go buy the fabrics for this because it's for a customer. So that's why. So I'm going to put my number back on here, right here at the top for now. And I'm going to move it out of the way because this one is done. And I'm going to press the rest of my pieces. So this one is now, as you can see, these seams go the opposite way. So I'm just going to flip it over. And they're in a totally different order because this is row five. And since I finger pressed, this should go really easily. Just making sure that all of my seams are open, you know, nice and flat, but that my big strip unit stays super flat. Yes. I like when I get to design customer quilts on my fabric selections as opposed to something that they would choose. Even though they give me the general idea of what they like, I like being able to just go and choose the choices. So if they like a yellow, I'm going to choose yellow fabrics, but I'm going to put the selection together. I like doing that. I like being 100% the creator on it. So again, I'm just moving the piece down, making sure it stays nice and flat. Put my sticker, what number it is, back on it. Lay it in the pile. And I'm just going to finish pressing them. I wish you guys could see my face instead of watching the ironing board, but unfortunately, 
I don't have no other way to do that right now with this camera that we're on. The finger pressing helped the pressing with the iron process go so much faster. That's for sure. And flatter. It lays a lot flatter. And every once in a while I pick up thread in my moving them around process. So it gets on the pieces, but should be good. Everything's nice and flat. Nice and straight. Put my number back on it. Thank you guys. Also, thank you for sticking around, watching the pressing process in an awkward, very close up position. But at least you get to see what the fabrics are, like a really, really good view of what the fabrics look like. Most of them are Joanne's brand. Some of them are other brands because I couldn't uh, find a, you know, I kind of chose through the whole store through all sorts of different um, prints. I had like five different colorways at first, and this is the colorway I stuck with. All right, two more pieces to press. So once I get the blocks all made, I'll be able to show you guys how they lay out. Because this is the outer section that I'm working on, by the way. I'm trying to get this section done first because I'm not really following the pattern in the book itself, per se. So I'm kind of like doing my own thing with it. So I'm working from the outside in because I'm going to be changing a couple measurements. I still need my quilt this quilt needs to be a king size and the pattern it turn it turns into 102 by 102 and i'm going for about 115 or so so i did change the everything up which i typically do with any pattern i follow except for cozy quilt design patterns i actually kind of try to keep within the pattern on those ones because they're pretty nice Okay, so number, this is piece number one, and it's now done. It's nice and flat. Um, it's nice to also for these to have a bigger cutting board, cutting mat. When it does come time to start sub-cutting, just for further whatever. All right, I'm going to move this out of the way. And change you guys back to the other angle. It's going to wiggle and swarm for a second. Okay, so we're going to go to the cutting table angle. 
Yes, I do. I need to make that one. Definitely. Still right here in my pile of I need to do it and get it done. So right now we're going to be cutting the strips so that we can put one of these together. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. Where's your roller thing that cleans clothes? I don't know. There's one over here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. I'm out of here now. Okay. So I'm going to make sure my area is cleaned up. All right. And what I need is not that. And these pieces I don't need. All this scrap stuff I don't need. So I'm going to move it all out of my way. All right. Nice clean area. You guys can see what I'm doing. Beautiful color choices in the bed. Ripping out your first attempt at machine quilting with a walking foot. Why are you ripping it out? Okay. So obviously for this, we need the big rule. And I'm going to grab row one. So we don't want this to get out of order. So I need my piece to be kind of near me. So I'm right here. Because I got to remember row one is that. I'm going to move the mouse out of the way. And if you hear the doorbell, that's because the girls are messing with it. Like they do every time they play out front. So this was one, row one. That, that. Uh, okay. So I'm going to take row one and put it up here. And what I'm going to do is see how it's on the 45 degree angle. So that's the wrong way. That's the right way. Oh my goodness. I think I'm backwards. There it is. So I need to start it from this side. See, look at that. Even I screw up all the time. There we go. So it goes from this way. Right? So here's the order. You can see that now. See? That's the order that it's going in. So I'm going to cut that direction. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. And I don't have a 45 on this mat. I need a mat with a 45 degree angle. So we're going to pull one up here. The best thing is to have these mats at the 45 degree angle. So I'm going to make sure from here. So here's the, the mat, you guys. And here on your mat is a 45 degree angle. I'm going to make sure that all of these ends that are tapered are beyond that 45 degree angle. And I'm also going to make sure that the bottom strip is lined up on a line. So we want this on a line and we want all of our staggered pieces to be beyond that 45 degree. So this one is where it starts. So I'm going to line it up on the line and I'm going to make my first cut on the 45 degree angle right here. So I'm going to line the ruler up. And then I have a 45 degree angle on the ruler. I want that at the bottom of my strip set. And we want to adjust it just a little. So it's nice and straight, nice and flat. And if you hear a baby, that's because she's pissed off that she had to come inside, it sounds like, instead of playing outside. As soon as I show you how to cut these, then I'm going to have to get off so I can go take care of all that. And I'm going to use my weight on here because I'm cutting left-handed first. And I'm going to chop this side off on my angle all the way down. Nope. Missed the seam. It didn't cut at the seams very well. There we go. I'm going to switch out to the smaller one. So you'll have a funky end piece that looks like this. All right, now I'm going to move that little funky piece to my pile of scraps down on the floor. And I am going to take my ruler now. I don't care about the mat anymore. Now I want the two and a half inch mark on my ruler. So I'm going to line that two and a half inch mark. I don't know if you can see. So here's the edge. 
I'm going to line that two and a half inch mark here on this edge all the way down. And I'm going to make sure that my 45 degree line on my ruler right here is lined up with one of these lines on here only due to the fact that I can't, I want to make sure that I have enough ruler on each end for this cut. So I'm going to line the two and a half inch mark right on the line. Make sure that this 45 degree angle is also lined up with a seam line and or the bottom of the strip set. I'm going to put my ruler back or my weight back down on it purposely. And now I'm going to make the cut. And now we have one strip. So this, I'm going to lay this out of the way for a second. So here's my piece. That one strip fits right here, just like so. See that? So when you strip piece, they fit on there. And it looks like these are going to be just a tad bit smaller being strip pieced. I don't know how that works, but it does. <laughs> these were two and a half inch se separate cuts, but that's fine. If anything, I'll make an extra one, but this is how it works. That's where it sits. So the rest of the rows, when you start cutting them, are going to fit in exactly. So we're going to go ahead and cut a few more pieces so that you can see. I'm just going to make a stack because I'm going to keep these with their number. So I'm going to keep my little number with these pieces that I'm cutting off of here. So I'm just going to take, line this back up again. Just laying it down here and I'm going to keep going off the two and a half inch mark on the ruler itself. Because it's as accurate as it's going to get from the ruler itself. Line it up nice and straight. Put the weight on it. Do it nice and flat. It's staying nice and flat, nice and flat all the way, nice and straight. Oh, don't move, ruler. Right there, right there, and right there. All right, so I'll just come over here, make that cut. Move that piece into the pile, over to the side, and see how many I can get here. Again, lining it up on the two and a half. Put my thing on there, making sure my 45 degree angle is on there just right. Cut it. And you can cut all as many layers as you feel you could stack up all your other pieces on here and cut as many <laughs> yeah i always start my first cut with my left hand so that i don't have to pick up a piece and turn it around that's so annoying to me so i just do it my way i start with the left hand cut and then everything else is right-handed because i'm right-handed Now I'm just going to cut this whole thing up and stack a pile of however many I can get. So this is the part I will leave you guys with, and then I'll come back with a video on how to put them together. Again, I'm just lining my two and a half and my 45 degree angle. Cutting down the whole thing and just stacking them up to the side. Yeah. I put my weight on it to keep it where I want it because it sometimes it'll shift and I don't want any shifting. So I'm so far got one, two, three, four, five, six. We're probably going to get seven, eight, nine, nine or 10 pieces from this, even less than I had thought, but that's okay. Cause I'll just make more strip sets. That's good that I 
Not good that I dropped my rotary cutter. Almost done with this mount strips. Right there, lined up on a line, lined up on a line, everything's lined up. Cut again. I think I'm gonna get one more. No, two more. No, one more, it looks like. Alright, one more. Yep. Only one more. So anything left over I save to make scrap projects with. Yeah, there's no way that's two and a half inches. Nope, nope, and nope. Alright, so this is my leftover and I'm just going to throw it down with my scrap pile. I'll take this. And I'm going to keep all these that I just cut together because this is row one, which is that top row of those piece. I'm just going to hook the whole pile together so that way they don't get messed up. So this is this section right here. So now all I have left to do is cut the rest of the sections, but I'm going to go take care of some stuff before I do all that. Let me turn the camera up. That's the only thing about this camera. I have to adjust for you guys constantly, and I'm sorry about that, but let it focus. Okay, so uh, let's see what everyone's saying. How many does it take for a baby quilt? Six cuts. Six Six of these will make a baby quilt, a, lone, a regular Lone Star, and I'll show you guys that before any... I won't put nothing together. So what I'll do is... We'll make the rows. At, I'll come back and after everything's cut. We'll put the rows together and then create these. And then I'll show you the variations that you can make with these, with all these blocks. Because this is what I'm considering one block. Although it's a diamond, it's considered one block. So I will show you guys. It takes eight of these, though, to make a lone star. So however many you do across and down, this is a six by six. So, but I will come back. So I appreciate everyone for watching and hanging around with my oops problem with the internet. Um, I'm pretty sure that the rest of it's probably going to be with this camera. So it's going to be a lot of moving around in the videos. And I'm very sorry about that in advance. Um, I don't know how else to fix the internet issue because it's not my issue. It's the internet that, you know, we have. So I can't do anything about that, but... What I can do is do my best to make videos for you guys to see and explain things. If you can't see it, I'll explain the best. But remember, for these, you could also cut individual diamonds to make these if you want to. This does this does not save any time. Strip piecing saves time. <laughs> so I just thought I'd let, throw that in there because they were right next to me. So, But I appreciate you guys watching, and I will come back with... It'll be considered video three because, obviously, so far I have two videos. So... Um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. And it, this whole series, I'm going to name the Mar <coughs> Mariner Star. So the whole series will be video one of Mar Mariner Star all the way to however many it takes to make this. So, and they will all be live feeds because I don't have the capabilities of making videos without a banner through it. And I don't want that for you guys. I'd rather have horrible videos that end this way than <laughs> banners through videos. So. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like my videos and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. It'll be today, by the way. It'll be, it'll today, today. It'll be today. Where'd my mouse go? I'll be back on today. Just later. Okay. Now I got to figure out how to stop it from here. Um, and, 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 and I don't know how to end. <sighs> You guys get to hang with me until I figure out how to uh, stop this live feed. I've never done it from this screen before. No, no, no. Um. Oh, man.
that doesn't do it. That just says pop out chat. No. <laughs> Big hugs and bye, guys. Oh my God, how do you turn this off though? Oh, are you serious? Are you serious? Guess you're not going anywhere. <laughs> nope, because I can't figure out how to turn this off. 